Hello guys, great to see you for another video on the Nasson restoration. Today I'm going to show you uh, the finishing of the barrel clamps that you can see here. Uh, making them on the milling machine. Uh, there was already a video, I will put a link up in the description in the right top corner. So you can click on that uh, for the previous video. And then uh, th this is uh, how they are installed. So uh, a few days ago we already installed the barrel. We did it uh, together with uh, the rest of the guys at the Friday evening. So that's why there is no footage of it, uh, because that's uh, yeah, our private evening. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, putting on the clamps and then uh, putting the strap around and that's it. So it's uh, quite simple. Uh, it only has three bolts per side, so six and then two clamps and then the one in the back that's uh, fixed to the bridge block itself and that has no clamps uh, to the barrel or the bridge block it's just bolted on the bridge block uh, from the bottom that's it so i hope you enjoyed this video and um, today i'm starting to mill on the barrel clamps uh, it was quite a bit of work uh, to get them clamped down i uh, had to weld a piece on the sides so i had something to clamp to and then of course aligning them but because it's all hand work it's uh, yeah difficult to align it because nothing is perfectly straight normally with a casting you start uh, milling at sides and everything uh, to get everything straight and then you do uh, the finish work but uh, yeah for this it's a bit different i'm not gonna mill all the sides um, first I had to clean of course the bed, uh, cleaned it with a wire brush in the grinder and put some oil on it to prevent uh, further rusting. And uh, to repair the machine uh, it has two drive rolls with rubber on them for driving uh, the machine, for driving the milling head. And uh, one seems to be okay and one needed to be replaced. So I made a new one, but now the other one is breaking down. So hopefully I can finish milling this. At least I will try today and then maybe tonight I will take it off and cast another one that can cure during the night and then uh, put it in the oven tomorrow for finish curing. So hopefully I will only lose like a day. But anyway, for now what I'm doing is uh, milling this step in and I milled already a bit at the top so this is level of parallel to the bottom so I can flip it over and keep it parallel to this uh, milled surface for milling the slots it's a very time consuming job uh, it's an old mill so I can't take off too much at a single pass and uh, what I said with the roll breaking down one of the two I'm gonna take it extra carefully uh, but I will speed up uh, the process for you guys so for you it will look like high speed milling but for me it's uh, slow speed milling So I have taken down a few more passes. Um, there are a few things that I'm trying to do. This is a cross section. I'm going to mill straight down till this corner. Because the way this is now uh, set up, it will be flat and scutting about this width. Then I'm going to move over and do the same here, but a little bit deeper and then move back again so that everything is at the same plane um, so that's important and then I'm gonna tilt this head so that this curve will match this curve and then I will mill the curve in so that's one thing um, another thing I did check before is this plane to inside this plane where it's uh, moving along the slab so that's uh, more or less correct is of course yeah 
since we're not allowed to shoot uh, I can have a bit more play in it so that makes it a lot easier I don't have to measure everything and of course this plane on top has to be the same as this plane as well and uh, there is a little bit of play because it's all welded uh, yeah, made by hand so yeah, you have slight differences but yeah, that's also the reason why I'm milling them in tandem, it also saves on time. So every time I uh, lower the mill for the next pass, I only have to do it once and not for each separate piece again. And uh, so yeah, after this is milled, I can turn it over. I milled a little flat spot on top. And then I can mill this piece. So yeah, this has to be... Uh, the same plane, well not in the same plane, this has to be uh, parallel to this uh, plane uh, so that the barrel, uh, because it's straight, it will fit perfectly. You can sometimes uh, see the sparks flying, uh, that's because I'm not using coolant, that's one of them and uh, yeah, using coolant here makes a bit mess, I'm using a little bit of oil sprayed on the surface that I'm gonna mill but I'm also uh, milling through a weld so it can differ uh, hardness in each spot so that's why you sometimes see uh, the sparks flying So I have now down to about the corner that I need. I'm gonna check some measurements at home at the computer to see the distance from this corner till this level. Uh, so that is the most important measurement. So if that's correct I can continue or maybe I need to take uh, down a bit more. So I have to check that. Um, you can see that the sparks are increasing when I'm taking off more surface area. I'm not a uh, milling expert, uh, not even close. I know uh, quite a bit about uh, a lot of things, but milling is not uh, something that I know a lot of. So if there's someone uh, among you that know a lot more about milling, yeah, uh, if you can tell me what I should improve uh, on the settings, maybe uh, bigger depth of cut or maybe less I know that can make a big difference and also the feed rate and also of course I also have the, the RPM of the head that I can play with um, yeah I know that because I'm taking small chips it's more likely to start glowing because uh, there's a lot of energy in it but yeah, as I said, I'm not an expert, so if you know more about it, let me know. Uh, yeah, I'm always eager to learn more. So I'm now uh, going to check the measurements, and uh, if those are correct, I'm going to continue uh, milling the other side. And then, uh, yeah, the, the curve. So I have checked uh, at home, and I know this dimension now and also from this to the ground so I can check that and that's about four millimeters too high 
but as I, as I said, this surface, well this corner till this surface, that's important. It can be a bit too large since I still need to mill this. But that determines how far the barrel sits above the slat. Since this surface, this here, sits on the slat. So I have to see how I can measure it. So this to the bottom of 30 and then from this plane to the bottom of this needs to be 81.6 I believe. Yes. And to the bottom it should be 110.6. So that's 29 millimeters from this plane to the bottom. So it's a little bit thicker but yeah that's okay. So it should be to the bottom 111.6 and now 114.5 so about 3 millimeters I need to take down. I have changed the RPM from 680 to 480, that's, that's uh, one step. And you could see it was quite a bit less sparking. But also I could hear that uh, the milling needed more power to do that the same job because it's taking off more material at the same time uh, looking at the speed of more material per uh, revolution of the milling head. I'm gonna try one setting lower. Uh, I think that it's to 340 rpm. See if that uh, looks even better but also want to take care of the rubber wheels in the back that they don't uh, disintegrate uh, because they're already bad and I want to try to finish as much work as possible before that and uh, yeah so we'll see what happens if it's too low then I'll move it up and I'll leave it what it is right now but we'll see before the RPM was at 1360 and now it is at uh, 960 so the next step down is 680 so that's the next one I'm gonna try out So when I was at this end I measured over here you could see that I used a square because I have to measure an angle because I welded the strip on. So I used the square to measure, I have the thickness of the square. So I could see that was uh, about a millimeter off, about just under a millimeter. So I'm about three tenths of a millimeter off now but yeah what I said before I still need to mill here and then I can get it correctly. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy how it's going now. I uh, lowered the RPM of the, the motor itself. So you have several options of lowering the speed. Uh, one of them is the motor has two speeds. And then you have several speeds in the gearbox. So uh, lowering the speed of the motor also helps in preserving the rubber wheel uh, for so far. So let's check it. It hasn't gotten any worse. So I think I can finish the entire part and then can also take the time to make the, the new rubber wheels. Uh, yeah, when you have to do it as a rush job, it's more easily to make mistakes. So I don't want to do that if I don't have to. So now I'm going to move over and mill the back end. I have to measure this width 
so that's correctly that it's also centered uh, compared to this uh, part and uh, then I can uh, tilt the head for the curve I have a tube that's about the same diameter I cut a little piece out and uh, so it has the same diameter as the barrel and then I can test fit it if it's the correct angle yeah, it's a lot of trial and error to get the angle right but I have enough depth of material uh, yeah, to find out what the correct angle is so that's not a problem then I'll turn it over but I have to find uh, like a T-slot mill that will fit in here and also it will fit this hat so I'll have to do that uh, tomorrow I need 106 mm in between I have a bit more, a uh, bit less now so I have still some room to uh, adjust so I'm gonna check now if I'm in the middle or not so this is a little bit narrow uh, narrower than it should be so also I have there a bit of room so if this is more or less in the middle then it's okay and when I flip it around I have to make sure that I get this one as precise as possible I have maybe a half a millimeter on each side room but let's check it So I'm measuring from the outside, but I know the distance from the outside to the inside of the groove. So this is a little bit larger, about a millimeter, and this is a millimeter shy, so I need to move over one millimeter. And then it's uh, pretty close. This morning I've been looking for a mill for the slots and I found some. Uh, now I have to make an adapter or get one made on a lathe uh, to fit this mill on this uh, chuck or adapter whatever you call it is a uh, taper conus. Uh, yeah and then I can use it for this but first I'm finish all the milling with this one because I need the hat uh, to take to the guy with the lathe so he can fit everything properly but now uh, I will start milling the uh, the radius that I need on this side and I can flip them over and I still need a 45 degree angle on the bottom side to clear uh, the parts so in order to uh, mill the correct curve I told you before I'm gonna tilt the hat so I uh, will can uh, I can create a curve with this mill, but yeah, the angle determines to what curve, and I have a piece of tubing of the same diameter as the barrel 
where this needs to fit so I can check it if the curve is correct so that's uh, yeah a lot of trial and error so I'm gonna do that now <laughs> So we have a curve now and when I put a tubing in I can still rock it back and forth so the radius of what I milled is larger than the tube itself so I need to tilt it further. So, second attempt. Not rocking at all. So that radius is perfect for what we need. I probably cannot reach the corners. So I have to see when I draw this, the line up to the corner that I get deep enough. And then the, the little bit of remaining material I can do with the grinder. But of course I'll try to get as close as possible to the corner. At first I will take the majority of the material off and get this to the correct thickness. Um, I know for this one, since this corner uh, I measured uh, in the drawing from the corner, uh, the thickness of the material should be a certain measurement. This plate is a bit higher up than it should be, so I need to adapt for that, but that's uh, not a problem. So I now know what this should be, and then I can move to the edges and then this part this plate is a bit lower it's uh, about correct uh, as it should be uh, so I put this in front so that the best details get uh, in the position for the best view so this part is a little bit off but only a few millimeters <laughs> Um, apparently I made a little mistake. I thought this would be a nice round curve but uh, apparently it's more like an ellipse because the deeper I go now the, the curve seems to change. So it's a uh, smaller radius but that leaves me still enough material at the edges so yeah that's not a problem at the moment other than I need to change the angle. But what I'm gonna do now uh, Mill to the correct depth first and then see what I need to change to get the correct curve. I'm making uh, another piece of uh, the same curve and uh, I'm going to line it up with the two corners and scribe it on both ends so that I have a line to mill to. And then when it's really close, the, the last bits of transition from one milling lane to another. The, the milling passes uh, I can grind out with the uh, angle grinder with the uh, sanding disc so it's not really a problem but I you know, already thought it's going quite easy after two attempts getting the correct angle but yeah uh, everybody makes mistakes but yeah we continue and we make the part as it should be it takes just a little bit longer than I thought but no problem I'm now at the correct depth and now you can see very clearly that it's become an ellipse. The bottom part of the curve is uh, correct 
but uh, here on the sides it's not but I'm gonna keep this angle and I'm gonna mill as close to the edge as possible and then I'm gonna change the angle uh, to match the curve uh, so far so good and happy with the results it's looking good As you can see, I've taken the clamps off the mill. Well, they're still on it technically, of course, but uh, they're not clamped down anymore. The bottom side is done. We have the curve here, so that's good. Now I will clamp them down like this. You need a chamfer on these two edges and a smaller one on the outside edge to clear uh, the elevation part. So I'm going to do that now and when that is done I can take this mill but I need an adapter for this holder, put it in here and then of course I need to turn it again and I can start milling here. See it's not fitting at the moment but I think with this mill also take a little bit down so that the depth is correct because with this mill it's easier than with this one and then I can use this one to just touch off and then mill into the side and create a pocket large enough and deep enough I try to mill on this side but uh, the head gets in the way, uh, there's more on this side than on this side I think, so I'm going to try this side and if that fails I have to do it by hand, but yeah it is what it is. You can see how close I'm getting to the machine, but it's just enough. I have milled uh, the one side, uh, as you can see I put the, the head back on uh, vertical again for horizontal milling. I'm gonna mill these surfaces, but it's taking a lot of time more than I thought to mill these chamfers and they don't have to be that precise so the other two I will do by hand by grinder because it's a lot faster than adjusting everything but yeah these surfaces I need to be perfectly flat and uh, the same size line as this one so I'm gonna do that now and then I will take it off and I bring the hat uh, to the guy with the lathe for making an adapter for the for the other mill and then in the meantime I can cut these pieces off and uh, make the chamfers and put them back on in the yeah in for, for milling in this direction and then hopefully in a few days I have the adapter and I can start with the, that part of the milling and then yeah I need to put some chamfers on in the meantime round it off, make it nice, drill a few holes and then these parts are also done.
as you can see the milling hat is back with the adapter so now it fits in the mill and I can start milling the slots um, I will do it one at a time uh, because I have to clamp it down really tight and since this uh, it's hardened steel instead of the, 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 the plate you can change uh, the speeds have to be lower so I rather not uh, take a chance that it's not clamped down well enough uh, so I do it one at a time Of course I have to make sure that's aligned so I will use the inside edge that I already milled to measure to the uh, parts of the bed uh, so it's parallel. The longer your ruler is uh, the more accurate you can measure. So that's the same. <coughs> and then uh, after tightening down another measurement just to uh, make sure that it didn't move. That's good. So when I'm cutting this like this, because it's way larger, the RPM has to go down, but also uh, because it's a hardened uh, cutting face instead of the, the plates you can use to exchange uh, they also need a lower speed and also the feed rate has to be low enough so check that one too So this part is done, um, I was milling and I saw on this side it was barely touching, there was a slight difference like maybe half a tenth of a millimeter, so I wanted to raise uh, the bed a little bit and then cut this side later to the same level, but something got caught up in the spindle probably and I could feel uh, resistance and then it jumped up a bit and it was just enough for the mill to pull the piece over but nothing got damaged uh, even with this slight depth of cut the tracks that it left here from pulling it over disappeared so uh, no damage done and uh, yeah this dimension everything is correct now so I'll do the other one uh, off camera quickly and then we're uh, good for installing the parts still have to jump for one side but then uh, I have to drill a few holes and that's it then I can install the barrel uh, sorry for my voice I have a little throat infection so that's the reason why my voice changed a bit but hopefully it's over soon hello guys we're at the end of this video uh, you can see that the shield is already on so uh, work continues uh, as I said before uh, we installed the gun uh, at the Friday night with the friends which is our private night uh, but I need to explain a little bit how this is working uh, You saw me make uh, the barrel clamp. I rounded off the edges uh, This is a strap 
and over here there's a steel band a strong steel band wrapping around the barrel and these three bolts uh, will clamp it down the, the strap is essentially a bit too short and in that way by tightening the bolts you can really tighten down the barrel really good and it's also sitting in a groove here so that the orientation is always good so that's it for this video i still need to do a few small things like a grease nipple here but i don't know which threads i need for that i don't know which grease nipple is in that uh, the hole is drilled so the only thing i need to do is drill it a bit bigger and tap the threads and here you have two small uh, bolts for adjusting the play on the, the brass that's in between so also need to tap those holes and see what bolts are going in there and then yeah all the the barrel clamp all the straps are done and then for next week i have a little explanation of what we're going to do uh, before millitracks and uh, which order approximately so i hope you uh, enjoyed this video uh, don't forget to click uh, the subscribe button thumbs up and the notification bell and see you in the next video